Hi, I'm Mike Edwards. The company is Home Improvement Doctor Limited. Um, we're part of the DIY Doctor Group. Um, and today we're going to be testing uh, a small electric Titan chainsaw. Um, but before we do that, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Um, anything that, any electrically operated equipment that you're using outside, please remember to use an RCD, a residual current device socket. Um, outside sockets have usually got RCD protection um, and current legislation says that any socket that can be used for outside appliances must be RCD protected at the fuse board but just to be on the safe side if you don't have one of these and you're not sure then go and buy yourself an RCD socket that you can plug in to use uh, equipment outside if you cut through a cable or anything um, then you'll stay safe so we're going to plug this into an RCD socket, um, but before we do that, we're just going to talk a little bit about the chainsaw. Um, DIY doctor and home improvement doctor, as you know, normally build houses. Um, we don't do a great deal of gardening, so every time we've got anything to do like this, we come down to Orchard League Golf Club in Froome in Somerset, and we speak to Dave, Dave Roberts, the head greenkeeper, and he demonstrates this stuff for us. Um, an important thing to note is that you, as a member of the public, as a home improver, you can go and buy a chainsaw pretty much from anywhere. This one comes from Screwfix, um, delivered next day, a fantastic service. Um, but wherever you get it from, you can buy it immediately, but you still need to be safe when you're using it. And as you can see, Dave's got chainsaw boots on, chainsaw trousers, uh, a chainsaw helmet. You've got to stay safe with these things. One slip and you've lost a limb. They're, they are very, very dangerous pieces of equipment. Um, I'm a little bit dubious about using anything with a blade on that's also got a cable. Um, I'm going to say that right up, up front. Um, I'm also very, very dubious about things like electric chainsaws, electric um, slab cutters, any of that. Um, but having said that, this one is, is particularly well guarded, particularly well protected with a moulded plug. Um, so we're going to plug that in a second and get on with it. But first of all, a little bit about the chainsaw itself. Dave, you've had the opportunity to have a look over it. Yeah, that's right. Um, and I know you told me again, once again, that one of my bugbears is things like this arrive in the post. They've got no chain, so, chain oil, no. no oil for the for the engine or whatever. I don't know. Does this particular engine need any, any lubrication other than the chain oil? Well, this particular saw, all it needs is basically <coughs> chain oil into this yeah. little reservoir here. Okay. And all that does is lubricate the chain on the yeah. bar. Okay. So yeah. this is called the bar. Yep. When you buy it, it'll come in three bits. You get the bar, the chain, and the body itself. Chain oil goes in there. Now, I took the liberty, of, we've been contacting manufacturers to say, look, why don't you send a little tub of chain oil with these machines? Chain oil or two-stroke oil or something, um, so that the user, whether the buyer can use them straight away. Um, and, I, and what they've said to me, they're going to make an effort. But what I want to tell you is that when you buy one of these, you're going to need some chain oil. I've written it down because I can't remember the number. But again, if you buy this from Screwfix, the chain oil is product number 27933, and that's chain oil, oil for your saw. Um, so remember that you're going to need some of that. The chain oil goes in there, it lubricates the chain as it goes around. Um, Dave's going to demonstrate for us um, using this log. We've sat it on a pallet so that it doesn't rock about um, while we're cutting it. So I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to let Dave get on with it and then we'll talk about how it performed. Okay, Dave, you should be, you should be live. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah, I'll get out of your way. Let's get to the front of the machine. Okay, mate. Yeah. Bit of messing around with the switch there, but uh, so what do you reckon? Well, it's quite good. It's full of all the safety features. Yeah. And on the back of the trigger here, you've got a button that obviously you have to push in before the 
Before you can operate the trigger, yeah. Power throttle will come up. Um, you've got a kick gap safety guard here, which basically, in the event that the saw was to kick back up at you, right. your hand will then click that. Ah, oh, right, yeah, and yeah, the chain yeah. And it stops, stops immediately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the thing with this, this saw in, in general, it comes with a low kickback bar and chain as well, so right. the risk is minimised slightly okay. as well by having yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I note that you were. Um, you always use the back end, if you like, the blade nearest the, the body yeah. of the machine when you cut. Is that a good advice to use a that? Good advice. I mean, on this side of the saw here, you'll see these little grooved teeth. Yeah. Now, that will stick into the wood itself yeah. and just give you more stability right. in cutting. I mean, if you're cutting at the end, that's when you tend to bounce. Yeah, and you get the kickback. Kick yeah, because that, I mean, that's the dangerous part, isn't it? If a saw kicks back, you're pretty much out of control. Exactly. Yeah. Um, one so, thing to note, really, with them, I mean, with a petrol chainsaw, you tend to fill the oil up as you feel the oil will run out after the petrol. Right. So once the petrol's run out, you'll fill your petrol back up uh, and yeah. top up with oil. Yeah. Obviously, with no petrol in this one, it's quite important that you do check, just on this little sight bar here, yeah. that you have got oil in there. And how often do you reckon you should check that? How much oil does it go through? Well, I mean, I, I check it every time I took it out. I mean, yeah. just to be on the safe side, you know you've got some in there. Then, so you've you? probably, well, what do you reckon, about an hour's cutting or something, logging or whatever? Yeah, yeah, an hour should be. Yeah. Should okay. Be so, right. so there you go. So, on a on a on an industrial scale, I mean, obviously you you've got to clear woods and stuff for the for the golf course. I mean, is is this something that you would use on at that kind of level, or is it purely a DIY home improver tool? I mean, purely the fact that it's got a lead on it yeah. restricts where we can use it. So, yeah. on that sense, someone at home with a log burner, or something like that, yeah. just a little bit of wood to cut up. Okay. Then, yeah. Fair enough, it's plenty powerful. I mean, yeah. it's got a long bar on it, which, yeah. you know, you'll be able to eat anything to 14 inches, I would imagine. Oh, brilliant, yeah. 10, 12, 14 yeah. inches, and it's got plenty of power there as well, so. So pretty much ideal for the home improver, not necessarily take this out of the forest with a lead four to 400 yards. <laughs> <laughs> I think you struggle first. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. Well, thanks ever so. So there we go, that's, that's the Titan electric chainsaw, available from Screwfix. Um, the expert tells us that it's a, it's a great little tool for the home improver for logging if you've got a wood burner or a bit of an orchard you want to cut down. Be very careful about the lead. Um, always keep that behind you. Make sure it's right out of the way. But all in all, yeah, a, a tool recommended by, by Orchard League Golf Club and, and obviously by DIY Doctor.